Coming into the Peace Corps, or at least the way it was for me, it was uh, really sort of a plunge. You just didn't know what you were getting yourself into. I can't exactly remember why I came in. I used to have a pet answer, but I forgot it. I don't know, I had been more or less trying to settle down, but then still having a certain amount of restlessness. I don't know, I had this idea that there, there, there was something, something that I could do. It was the possibility of doing something that was really your own. If I didn't do it now, it, it would be a question of just keeping on saying, if I had, if I had, which is no way to really go through life. We've taken, it's about a 24 hour trip I guess across and I don't think any of us slept very much and we got to Bombay, it was the monsoon, the hottest, stickiest, heaviest air I've ever felt and uh, I couldn't help thinking, my gosh, is, is this what it's going to be like? really, as an American, uh, of, well, even just average means, you're very fortunate. You're just born lucky, actually. Uh, the education you have, you're expected to get. You know, it's not something you even got to struggle for, really. And it was uh, a chance to make some uh, practical use of what I'd sort of lucked into all my life. I remember when we first heard about Bimley in training. A Peace Corps rep told us that this was a dying town and that he was sending two volunteers here to put life in a dying town. It's got a very interesting history. It was a big seaport for a while until another town about 25 miles down the coast took over as the big seaport. And all of the trade has gone elsewhere. The school was built about 1929, and it's probably one of the biggest buildings, one of the biggest new buildings in town. Good morning, gentlemen. What do you have first period? English. English? 
Who's your teacher? Ian Subraha. 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 Is he a good teacher? Yes. You think so, huh? I agree. I also think he's a good teacher. You were going early to the class. Yes. Why? Ah, uh, homework. Homework. Good morning. Telugu, Hindi, Sanskrit, and English. be visiting education experts. You spent quite some time convincing them that you're a recent college graduate who wanted to see the world and put into action some of the ideas that he had had for quite some time, and you are not a visiting education expert whatsoever, or for that matter, a visiting expert on anything. I remember my first three weeks here, Sam and I used to come back together and we were almost ecstatic about it. Oh, this is a great opportunity, a great opportunity. Look at the things we can do. And the letdown is not immediate, it is not all at once, but it is a gradual, slow, day-by-day -day realization that in order to get anything done at all, you are going to have to bow down to the system slightly to play within it. I taught my, my first class um, before the headmaster, a group of students who couldn't understand me at all, and about half the teachers in, uh, in the school who thought that I was an expert on education. It was the first classroom I'd ever stood up and taught in front of. First class I'd ever taught. I'd never had any practice teaching, really no educational theory, no nothing. And uh, so I, I started teaching. And uh, <coughs> really, it sounds worse than it was. Because, I mean, I was there, and I had something I wanted to say, and, you know, I kind of taught it. OK, this point here is the starting point. OK. One take point is that it goes from here. And then, you know, it slowly dawns on you that that's not teaching. Uh, maybe, maybe you can lecture it like that if you're, you're teaching in college or something. But in high school, you just got to assume that uh, you're dealing with uh, people who you've got to make learn. You take a kid who, uh, who can't even seem to grasp the conception of what volume is, something like that, who, can't, who, who can just never get it straight, that uh, if you multiply a length times a length times a length, you get something, uh, a space, a volume. All you have to do is go out to uh, one of the villages and just see the whole atmosphere of it. It's just so, so utterly foreign to the, the kind of little obscurities you're trying to teach them in science. That it's a wonder that they, uh, you know, they can even be forced to sit in the class. Yati 
Susan and Lois looked around the hospital, and then they met with the matron, and she asked them, what do you want to do? So they asked the matron, well, what did you want us to do? And she didn't know. And they did a little bit of teaching. And they found out that the teaching didn't work out because the head tutor, for some reason, didn't really want them. Now, I think possibly it could be from the fact that he thought they might be a threat to his job. So they had many meetings, not only with the matron of the hospital, but also the superintendent. And then they decided that maybe it would be best to ask for a transfer. No, no fever. Okay. Um, how much is that to do? No uh, pain. How much is that to charge for that? Quite a bit. Quite a bit. Come here, come here. 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 Come Oh, it's strange that, that pleasantness that you that you project in spite of yourself. Because you go over there sometimes and you're so irritated just for the pure fact that you're awake and you're up and it's 8 o'clock in the morning and the same people are coming in that came in 12 days ago and they got the same things wrong with them and they just the same and you're giving them that and you know they're going to be back the next two weeks in a row every day. But you just can't be angry with them. Just personally, you're angry at the, at the total picture that, that this can happen and that this continues to happen every day. You know, when your baby's starving and you know it, and there's nothing you can do about it, absolutely nothing. You don't think of you don't think about um, the political or philosophical arguments, and not really being able to 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 feel the same way the people who feel who are suffering. But it's so difficult for those people. I mean, you're you, you know you're a Peace Corps volunteer in India, but you've got something to eat. You know, you aren't starving. A good nurse in the United States is not necessarily a good nurse in India because to be good any place also depends on the conditions. Now the nurses have difficulty with the conditions in India. You have the problem of sanitation, you have the problem of cleanliness, and boy, it's here. And they just can't expect that overnight whatever is supposed to be is going to come to be. And they also can't just take off and say it's stupidity that keeps conditions the way they are. In other words, people are important, but uh, you have to look at the conditions. There has been impact in nursing. Because of course, India really needs him. But they need the kind of a person who can uh, accept in the beginning what is there and then work with what's there.
there were about 300 birds here. And the fellow was struggling to produce enough eggs to uh, for the consumers. There were a few obvious flaws, and we could show him how to improve, which he which he eventually did. He had uh, reservations about uh, these newcomers that came in and and thought they could tell everybody about everything about poultry. And, and uh, after we got him straightened around, nobody else really seemed very interested. We just just got into the country and we expected things to happen when we wanted them to. And as was pointed out to us later by one of our supervisors, he said, in America, when you turn a switch, the light comes on. But in India, when you turn the switch, it doesn't always come on right away. But it takes some time for a person to get onto the locality, the the modes of the people, the uh, just how the community operates, how the people uh, are convinced about things. These eggs, uh, when they do this, the, the eggs go down into the stomach, and then they hatch, just like in a, a under a hen, the eggs will hatch. We've started this on a commercial basis, producing at a high scale, getting a uh, a good price for the eggs, distributing them and uh, selling the hens when you're finished. When it comes down to actual results of what has been done, it seems rather gratifying at times to see the amount of poultry that has been started. When we got here, there were perhaps 300 chickens. As of today, there are around 7,000.
private school here in Jaipur uh, to work with us. We have about 13 or 14 boys now who all come from very good families. So right now, they'll be the leaders. I know, but I know we're ready because Father Greg really wants it. I can't, I don't know. But you can buy it. You can buy it. You can buy it. You can't buy football in this country. No, you can't buy We're trying to get one, though. Why can't you buy them? Well, I don't know. They don't have them in this country. They don't have footballs? Footballs? Well, not football. Really. Not American style football. Yeah, not oh, American. Not American. Look, look, look at soccer ball. But for these, you but can have Indian football. Indian football. Well, that's what we all do. Get Indian football to take them down here. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's not necessary to keep by American football. We play for it. No, no. How do we play American football? Well, I know how to play American football. <laughs> Pretty soon, we got to start doing more activities for these kids, and yes. they're going to get tired. And, and it's one thing I don't want it to do is degenerate into just kind of a sports club. We gotta get started, we gotta get some money, jelly, so we can get started more activities with the kids. Put this into us probably, but we've also got to put a sense of urgency in them. Yes. I mean this is this is probably the hardest thing for us to do is to put a sense of urgency into these kids and make them want to do these things. We want them to say, I don't want to live in a busty area any longer and I want to do things to get out of it. I want to go to school, I want to learn. And I think we can at least with some percentage of the kids we can do it. saw some of the things that I thought were were necessary, like better sanitation. So we, I went to uh, the people. I showed them a, the plans for a sanitary type of dream, and I asked them to build it. And later on, I went to the Rotary Club. I gave them a talk on, you know, sanitation, I, a one-minute talk. And all these people said, you know, that's a very good idea. And uh, that was uh, something like six months ago. Nothing has been done. But I also was the trying to set up a program in physical education there. You know, these, these students don't have any any uh, actual class type, you know, physical education. They're, they're just, you know, let loose, you know, okay, you want to play, go play. So I, I got the permission of the uh, superintendent of the elementary schools. And uh, for one month straight, I showed them all these exercises and they taught the teachers how to do it. And one. Two, three, up, and one, two, three, up, and one, two, three, up, and one. When I left, I said, okay, I'm here a month. So you can do it yourself now. I said, you please try and do it. You know, I think these children like it. Why don't you, you know, do it? They all said, oh, yes, yes. Next day, it was tough. Never, nothing. No, th this is that night school that we started. That I started over a year ago. Uh -huh. It's the only place where there's a light. I went to the cinema yesterday. Uh -huh. uh, or I went to the no, no, drama no, 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 no. yesterday. Not, not past tense. You say in present tense with the word. Present. I, I, am I will go. I will go. In future. Future tense. I will go to the cinema yesterday. I will go yesterday? <coughs> Tomorrow. Yeah. The, the, these are the remainder of the people who are coming constantly since one year. One man is a one man is a is a radio mechanic. Another man is a rickshaw driver. And the, some of these other boys, there's a few boys that are coming. These boys are are some students in the school. They're actually going to school. Huh? Tomorrow I will play football, or I will do my homework. Huh? I'd like to help them. I understand, you know, some of their difficulties, and I still know that a lot of them are scoundrels. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm not saying they're beautiful people, but uh, maybe if some of them they'll they'll just uh, realize that you know when they get when they get older, some of these people and some of these young boys that uh, the, the just the life that their parents have isn't the kind of life. Maybe, maybe that's uh, what will be left behind. I don't know. Give me a pencil, 
ది గివ్ మీ ఏ పెన్ ఆర్ పెన్సిల్ నాకు ఒక కలము కానీ పెన్సిల్ కానీ ఇమ్ము ఐ లవ్ మై మదర్ నేను నా తల్లిని ప్రేమించును షీ గివ్స్ మీ ఫుడ్ ఆమె నాకు ఆహారము ఇచ్చును ఐ లవ్ మై మదర్ హూ గివ్ హూ గివ్స్ మీ ఫుడ్ నాకు ఎవరైతే ఆహారం ఇచ్చేదారో ఆ నా తల్లిని ప్రేమించు ఇట్స్ టఫ్ టు థింక్ పాజిటివ్లీ ఫర్ ఇండియన్ దేర్ ఇస్ నో ప్లేస్ టు గో ఫర్ us we're not part of the culture that's our strength and so we have places to go train that hits the school about 8:30 or 9 o'clock. And so a good percentage of the boys who live in the villages along those four miles use this as their transportation to school. Naturally without tickets, but they the train is going so slowly anyway. They as it comes past them they'll jump on. When it comes to the school they jump off. Yeah, it's a big joke to them. living here at the school itself of course we are here the whole time the students know we are here we are accessible as we can be if we were any more accessible i don't know what we would do our place is a kind of a semi official local boys club you may say every evening every morning the noon time the holidays i mean we're the boys know we're here and if we're here then they feel they can come also right now we're having a big craze on monopoly the old the old game my sister sent me a set of this thing and i finally brought it out one day and it was amazing how quick these kids caught on to it and just i just began some boy would come with a cut or a scratch or something put a little tincture or something on it if nothing else i can put a bandaid i've run through several hundred bandaids as a matter of fact it's not i mean of course i don't begin to fool around with they start telling me they're having heart pains and all this kind of thing i mean i'm i'm more or less specialized in external medicine Now his left arm is free. He can move this hand all around. The rest 
of his body, though, also his hair, is still tied down on the ground. Now, he says, by lifting it up to my face, this arm, when he raised his arm up to his face, he says, I discovered the methods they had taken to bind me. So he could see, he could see what they had used to tie him. The kinds of ropes and the pegs and all of these things. Okay, he could see that. Now, at the same time, with a violent pull, violent, Excessive pain, excessive pain, very much, very much pain. He says, I a little loosened the strings that tied down my hair on the left side. Okay, now here's what he's talking about. Remember, he has his hair just in small pieces, or tied to the ground, and now he's pulled violently. All right. Now just think, you know, if you have, if someone is holding some of your hair and you pull. Alright, okay. Excessive pain, he says. Very much. But, anyway, he loosened these ropes. Now, loosened. He did not pull them out. They became loose, loose. So he could move his head now about two inches. Only that much, two inches, see? He now, his head is on his back. Now he can move like that. Two inches. All right, now, but he says, these little people, they ran off, ran away, before he could seize them. Seize? That word? Seize. 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 No, no. Seize. Yeah. 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 Okay, he, now see these little people. He has this one hand now. Now he wants to grab them, but they ran away. They ran away. We've all felt, an, I'm sure we've all felt, an impact on, on individual students. 
This is why it has been a rewarding experience. Almost every week you have a different kind of breakthrough. There is a section in almost every class. It varies anywhere from 5 to 20 to 50 percent of a class that you somehow have a feeling that they may not have understood a damn thing you've said since you've been here. And it sounds terrible. You would think uh, when an examination requires 35 percent to pass, and you, you, ought to, you ought to kick yourself uh, clear to Calcutta if you can't make them all pass. It just isn't that way. You've got some kids who you, you can help. And you've got some kids who are really hopeless. The most benefit is to a fairly small percentage of kids who uh, you have made realize that what they have in their books, what they have in their syllabus, is just kind of, kind of a, a bare bones sort of thing. They are just sort of uh, have the, uh, you might say, the lexicon of, of science thrown at them without any of the, the spirit of it. And the few who have maybe gotten a glimpse of things like this, well, maybe they're a whole new world sort of, sort of uh, opened up to them. If you go and study some more chemistry in college, you'll find out that, that nobody calls an H plus an H plus. They, uh, they can call it something like this, H3O plus. But nevertheless, it's the result of the ionization of an acid. If you think of yourself just as a teacher, you know, it's really easy to get frustrated. As I suppose it is uh, teaching anywhere. I mean, I think if you're, a, even if you're a good teacher, it's uh, not really uh, too positive an influence if you just uh, sort of, sort of live to yourself. Tekli is not a large town, it's just a little more than a village. There's one main road where about 90% of the shops and the, the uh, stores, all of these things are located on this one road. In the evening time, 
from about 4.30 until, well, till 9. The road is just full of people. This is my time for going into the bazaar after school, of course, but going into the tailor shop or to buy cigarettes, to buy fruit, things like this, even going to the barber. This is my time to go. And with all of these people there, I not only do I run into so many students going place to place, but the fathers, the different merchants that I know. No, it's more or less just a friendly, like, like a walk at home would be, walking through a small town. You greet your friends, you stop to talk to them, you do your business. Of course now, uh, by this time, the people, they know me. They know my name, they know what I'm doing, why I'm there. I'm sure that some of these boys will be teachers. And perhaps just this experience with somebody who had some different ideas, different methods and different goals is going to make them more discontent with the way things have been, the way things will be after we go. This idea of being accessible and mixing with the people, not just sitting in my house waiting for people to come. The idea is that you know, we can be more or less exchanging instead of everything coming towards me. Effect. 
every bit of work that you do is doing so much good. So that's why I say it's great. By being an American and having different experiences and thinking differently, you begin to give a quality to the activity that's going on. This is what it's all about to me. Yeah, this is the volunteer's job. And uh, the direction he takes to do it is dependent on his own personality. Their status, their, they don't fight it. They can wear a tie for the minister and their shorts for the villager. And then they use what they've got and everything becomes strength. Their skill is their attitude. It's lit, it's lit. There'll be a few seconds. Five feet, five feet. I told you, five feet. <laughs>